Hi there. Come on in. It's time for Old Time Radio. I'm your host, Jerry Sharp, inviting you to pull up a chair and listen with me to some old-time radio shows. I've got the old Majestic Radio all warmed up. We're going to reach out into that ether and listen to some comedy, adventure, and drama on old-time radio. And on today's show, hear episode four of Superman. And then in our second half hour, hear the complete, original, unedited broadcast of Suspense. That's in our second half hour. So stay tuned, won't you? of both mild-mannered Clark Kent and his alter ego, the mighty Superman, was Clayton Bud Collier of television's To Tell the Truth and then radio's Renfrew of the Mounted Police. As Kent, Collier always sounded as if the blue tights beneath his red shorts, beneath his gray flannel trousers, were too snug. And when at last he found a convenient phone booth, and he could cry, off with these clothes, this looks like a job for Superman. The voice dropped an octave in relief. His young friend Jimmy Olsen also had a bit of trouble with his voice crackling at times. It was more noticeable when Jackie Kelk was playing his other role of Homer on the Henry Aldrich show. The fact that Superman, super as he was, was the only adult still going through a change of voice may have helped some of the slightly older of his young audience identify with him. And as usual in such shows, the sidekick was not needed for identification. We wanted to be the hero, not someone star-struck kid trailing him around. Well, others in the cast whose voices remained pretty much the same were Joan Alexander as Lois Lane, and Julian Noah as Daily Planet editor Perry White. And now let's get right into our story. This is episode four of Superman, back from a broadcast of the 1940s. Let's go. Kellogg's Pep, the super delicious cereal, presents The Adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! And now, Superman. Events on the main line of the West Coast Railroad are rapidly reaching a climax. Speeding west out of Denver, the Silver Clipper, cracked streamliner, roars up the slope of the Rockies heading for San Joaquin Pass. Disaster, sudden and unseen, lies waiting for it in Schooner Canyon Lake. While Superman wings his way through space, searching desperately for the nearest mountain town. At last he finds it, drops down from the sky, and enters the office of the local chief of police in his character of Clark Kent, reporter. Listen. Well, you talk good. I'll say that for you, Kent. Well, if you don't believe me, telephone my paper and ask for verification. Or call the divisional superintendent of the West Coast Railroad at Denver. The Silver Clipper is a West Coast train, ain't it? Well, it is now, but it won't be long. I tell you, if something isn't done in a hurry... It's... Okay, but how are you going to prove it? Suppose I get up there to the San Joaquin and pull in a couple of guys. Why, well, how am I going to prove anything? Oh, I'll, I'll attend to that. You know the Circle Y Ranch? Sure. What about it? A couple of injured train men crawled in there a while ago. They were on that missing locomotive and tender. They were, huh? Wait, you don't mean it. I certainly do mean it. Hmm. If you get those two men I told you about, the one who calls himself the Wolf and his henchman Kino... The mystery is solved. Well, say, you begin to make sense, young fella. By gollies, I'll do it. What's your plan? Get a fast car and head for the crossing at San Joaquin. Yeah? 
You know the old Schooner Canyon Junction? Well, I reckon I can find it, even in the dark. All right, get up there and hide. If we don't catch them red-handed, it's no good. That's what I'm waiting for. Okay, Kent. Say, that is your name, ain't it? But, hey, hey, where are you going? I want to call my paper back east. Tell them to hold the presses for a big break. I'll pay for the call. Operator. Operator. I, uh, I want Perry White, managing editor of the Daily Planet. Yes. Uh, rush it, please. I'll hold the line. Hello, White speaking. Mr. White, this is Clark Kent. Kent? Good Lord, man, I thought you were dead. Where have you been all day? Tied up in a cellar, but I broke out. Listen, Mr. White, how long before you go to press? Now, wait a minute. Why, I'm going to press right now. Well, hold it, will you? Uh, Stop the press? It better be good, Kent. Oh, don't worry, it will be. The big break on the Western Railroad story. Kent, are you kidding? You know the warnings on the Silver Clipper? It's coming off tonight. Where are you now? In a police station in a little town on the main line. What's going to happen? I don't know, Mr. White, but I know this much. It won't be long. I've got to go now. Will will you hold the presses? Okay, Kent. You won't regret it. I'll call you the minute I have something. I can't wait. What's all this about a mysterious flying figure? Something called a Superman? Oh, forget it, Mr. White. Somebody's pipe dream, huh? There's been a lot of talk. I'll forget it. I'm in a position to know. So long, Mr. White. Good luck, Kent. I'll be waiting. Hey, stop the press. Replay's coming. Top column on the Western Railroad. Get a rewrite back. Superman, eh? I should say I am in a position to know. Up, up. Not much time with a wolf waiting there at the canyon. If I don't get back in time to fix that switch, 40 miles more. Faster, faster. Now listen, boss. Let's get out of this tunnel. I don't like it. Not too long to wait now. What's the time, Kino? Five minutes more. She's on time. She was on time at Creeville. Come on, boss. Let's beat it. A very sound idea, Kino. In five minutes or something less, this tunnel will be a most unhealthy place. What do you think will happen? Something resembling the end of the world, Kino. Screaming brakes, rending steel, billows of steam. Yes, decidedly we should move, my friend. Come. Where to? Down to the tracks where we can observe the switch. Close to the scene of action, but not too close. Listen, are you sure they can't stop in time? Downhill at 90 miles an hour? Impossible, Kino. What if she leaves the rails at the switch? What if she can't take the curve? Not chance, but not likely. Come on, man, get moving. Hey, someone's coming. Hey, hey, boss, you better get out of that. She's whistling for the highway. Quick, Kino. Minutes count now. There's the train. Traveling fast, all right. If I can do anything, it's got to be quick. Ah, there's the junction. Got a minute, maybe less. Down, down. Now then, what are those devils done to the tracks? Ah, broken the seals and thrown the switch, eh? Well, it won't take long to fix that. And I'll just rip up a few of the old branch line rails. Just to make sure. There, that ought to settle things. Well, well, look who's coming. Hey, boss, who's that guy down by the switch? Look, he's tearing up the track. Well, well, what are you doing? Where's your gun? Shoot, shoot. Don't worry, boss, I'll get him. I never missed yet. Got him, boss. No, no, you didn't. There he is. You missed him, you fool. Never mind, boss. I won't miss him this time. Hey, you. Kino, what's the matter with you? All right, then, rush him. The train. Here comes the train. Get that man away from there, Kino. Boss, beat it, beat it. It's him, I see him now. It's the man with the red cape. The train, the train. Run, Kino, run. Make for the car. Made it. Threw the switch just in time. Go on, Silver Clipper. High ball for Salt Lake City in the west. Now then, after those lads in the car. Watch it, you two. Here I come. I tell you, it was him. The guy in the red cape, the, 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 the Superman. Shut up, you know. Whoever it was, I'll settle with him. He threw the switch back and saved the train. Faster, boss, faster. Get away from here. Keep your head, Kino. There's something about this I don't understand. Boss, look out. He's right behind us. 
He's over our heads. Look, look. What, what is that thing? He's down there in the road ahead. He's standing there. Look out. We're going to crash. Sorry to disturb you, gentlemen. Don't try to get away. Who are you? Put me down. Let me go. Let me go. In one moment. Just now, while I hold both of you with one hand, I've got something else to do. That car, for instance. You won't need it again. Where you're going, got to make this accident look convincing. The the car. Look what he's doing to the car, boss. He's wrecking it. There. No one will ever ride in that again. Hello. Here comes the car. Heard the crash. Must be the police. Well, so long, gentlemen. I'm leaving you now, and if you ever wreck another train or try to, think what you've missed this time. Goodbye. Uh, 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 hey, hey, here's where that crash was. Uh, There's a couple of guys lying on the road. Hey, grab them, boys. I got them. Why, I wouldn't wonder if they were the fellas that newspaper man was talking about. They tried to make a getaway and cracked up. Well, look where their car got to. Man, why, it looks like a cyclone hit it. Yes, doesn't it? Uh, or that, uh, that Superman they keep talking about. Well, Good evening, Chief. Say, there you are. Why, it's the reporter. Well, howdy, Mr. Kent. Well, I, uh, I see you got them all right. Yes, but there was no train wreck. I guess we scared them off. Keep them huh? off. Yes. Keep them off. Huh? We done it. Put me in jail. Put me anywhere. But don't let that guy touch me again. He just came flying through the air. Say, he's nuts off his head. But that was a confession if I ever heard one. Yes. And if you'll drag the bottom of Schooner Canyon Lake, you'll find that missing engine and tender. What? And don't forget those two trainmen at the Circle Y Ranch. They'll be your star witnesses. Well, congratulations, Chief. You've caught the train wreckers all right. Uh, And thanks to you, Mr. Kent. Well, hey, hey, where are you going? I've got to get back to town. My paper's waiting for the story. See you later, Chief. Well, well, Kent, come on in. Well, well, it's fine to see you back. You've certainly made good in a big way. Thanks, Mr. White. And to show you what I think of you, I'm going to start you right out on another assignment. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. That's the best news I could possibly hear. Well, wait till you do hear it, my boy. There are one or two things I want to ask you about first. Yes, sir. Uh, I know it sounds foolish, but all these rumors about a mysterious flying figure clad in a red cape and all that, uh, you know anything about this uh, Superman? Do I know anything about this Superman? (laughs) Why, Chief, what a silly question. All right, all right, let it go. Now, I want to talk to you about your next assignment. Uh, Just pull up your chair. Yes, sir. Oh, confound it. I told him not to disturb me. Steady room. White. Caught the wolf, my friend, for all the good it'll do you. The wolf has a master, and the master speaks to you now. Here, what the, say, who is this? Uh, Kent, Kent, get over here. My compliments, Mr. Kent, on your first and last performance. What's he mean? You and your newspaper have interfered with my plans. Very well, my friend. Exactly 24 hours at this time tomorrow, you and your newspaper will be blown to a thousand francs. This is the yellow mask. Goodbye. Hey, hey, you! Wait, wait! Come back here! Operator, who was that man? Find him! Find him and trace him! Find him! Whose was the eerie voice calling Editor White on the phone? Who or what is the yellow mask? And can Clark Kent, without revealing his identity as Superman, solve the mystery in the newspaper office? Terrible, deadly danger threatens the Daily Planet. Superman has 24 hours time. Tune in, same time, same station, and follow the adventures of Superman. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman.
fellows and girls, be sure to follow the adventures of Superman. Brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, same time, same station, by the makers of that super delicious cereal, Kellogg's Pep. Superman is a copyrighted feature, appearing in Superman DC Publications. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Well, well, Superman solved that mystery handily. And I think what we'll do, let's, uh, let's leave Superman for a few weeks and come back to him, oh, in a couple months or so. And next week, start another series. I haven't quite made up my mind which one we should go with yet. But I'll be thinking about it, and so you join us next week for one adventure or another. But as we conclude this Superman adventure, let's kind of fill you in a little bit more on the Superman program. Superman, if you've been listening, you know, started in 1938. Along about 1945, Batman and Robin went on the air to help Superman in many adventures, appearing in every second or third story. And that was between 1945 and 1952. Sometimes the the, uh, Cape Crusaders having the stage much to themselves. Any meeting of two separate heroes in comic books is known in the language of the comic collectors as a crossover and is a rare, sought-after occurrence. The crossover where Superman and Batman met on the air was equally rare for fictional characters on radio, where almost nobody but comedians and singers ever visited each other's shows. Well, still, Batman and Superman getting together seemed right during the afternoon serial hour. The rest of that time and all the networks was saturated with successful adaptations of comic strips, including Dick Tracy, Little Orphan Annie, Buck Rogers, Terry and the Pirates, Hop Harrigan, and with programs original to radio, but so like comics that they were destined to become comic book material. Indeed, the Green Hornet and Captain Midnight both had second lives in the colored pages. Since all the available time in the afternoon was taken up by the serious, even stern heroes from the funny papers, the doubling up of Batman and Superman was almost a necessity. There was simply no room for a Batman radio series separate from the Superman program, although no doubt the producers hoped that, given an opening, Batman and Robin would spin off into a show of their own. But radio was plodding along at its own leisurely pace toward oblivion, and there was not time for Batman. And now let's take a little breather. We'll be talking more about Superman right after we go by Radio Band Remote and listen to the music of Gene Krupa and his orchestra. This is an original broadcast August 15th, 1945. Mutual presents that ace drummer man, Gene Krupa, and his orchestra. Night to you, ladies and gentlemen. Coast to coast, via mutual, is music styled by that ace drummer man, Gene Krupa, and his orchestra, playing from the Hotel Astor Roof in the heart of Times Square in New York City. arrangement of that good old hearty perennial stomping at the Savoy.
Aha, Gene Krupa and his orchestra, an original broadcast, this one heard over the Mutual Broadcasting System coast to coast on August 15th, 1945. Well, let's get back to our story about the Superman program. Oh, Superman had been badly in need of a friend. He had stooges and foils, but no one he could treat as an equal, a colleague, a confidant. Batman filled this niche. Batman won enough confidence from Superman to be the first person he ever let in on his secret identity as Clark Kent. Being a master of makeup, Batman thereafter sometimes doubled either as Kent or as Superman in order to help the real Man of Steel protect the secret of his identity. But the prime reason, plot-wise, for the introduction of Batman and Robin was as an antidote for the deadly radioactive element kryptonite, to which even Superman was not invulnerable. The man of steel was immune to bullets and knives and poison gas, everything. To give the program some suspense, the writers brought in fragments of meteorites from Superman's home planet, which gave off radiation that robbed him of his superness that could kill him if he were exposed to it long enough. Ordinary radiation couldn't hurt him, but super radiation from his own super planet could. When Superman was unsupered by exposure to the rays of kryptonite and lying helpless in a swoon, his reporter girlfriend Lois Lane and her fellow Daily Planet employee young Jimmy Olsen had to do a turnabout and rescue the once invulnerable man of steel. Of course, kryptonite didn't affect ordinary human beings. For the listener, this was certainly a startling development. He had heard these two inept reporters being trapped by the most transparent menaces conceivable for years, and it was hard to believe they had enough initiative to blow their own noses, much less save Superman from the clutches of a mad scientist trying to destroy him with kryptonite. And yet somehow... They bumbled through a number of such adventures scattered over a year or so. In one sequence, the two of them managed to seal up the offending kryptonite in a lead pipe, pried from beneath a sink. Another time, Jimmy Olsen returned a specimen of the strange element to its specially built container when he discovered Superman lying helpless beside the chunk of meteorite and its open box left there by a fiendish criminal. In still another adventure, the young boy and the girl reporter tossed the kryptonite off a cliff into the sea so that it would be carried far from the man of steel and his superhuman powers could return. They had done it again. Miracles would apparently never cease. More believable aids for Superman were clearly called for, and from the wings came the dynamic duo. And while they were not... From the Superman strip by Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster, Bob Kane's Batman and Robin were both from the same publishing company. They were not immune to bullets, but at least they wore cloaks. The most sterling rescue performed by the Cape Crusaders occurred when Superman was incapacitated in still another encounter with his elemental nemesis Kryptonite and kept a helpless prisoner in the attic of an old farmhouse. His captors sat around downstairs making bets on how soon their worst enemy, Superman, would die either from kryptonite poisoning or starvation. Eventually, Superman became so weak he couldn't speak. 
For two whole weeks he couldn't speak. Why, Superman might as well have stayed away from the radio station and gone on vacation to Miami. Meanwhile, Batman and Robin were carrying the action, tracking down clues leading to Superman's whereabouts. When at last they located the old farmhouse, a terrific fight got underway in which the chunk of kryptonite got knocked out of critical range of Superman. Weakened and dazed, he wandered off in a state of amnesia, having forgotten everything, even his super strength. And the Man of Steel eventually found himself playing record-breaking baseball under the name of Bud Guy. Of course, the dynamic duo successfully captured the gang at the farmhouse and soon traced down their wandering super buddy. The sight of the two familiar faces, or at least the two familiar masks, brought Superman back to normal. Super normal, that is. Batman and Robin made such good sidekicks that it's hard to see how the Man of Steel had gotten along without them up to 1945. But he had. Since Superman first began as a transcription series, sold individual stations in 1938. Before encountering Batman, Superman engaged in such varied adventures as searching for the lost explorer Alonzo Craig and the lost treasure of the Kulanki Indians, one of his first exploits in 1938. Tracking down spies in World War II, such as the one spreading terror through the terrible Green Death, and voyaging to the planet Utopia, whose heavy gravity and nitrogen-free atmosphere first robbed the Man of Steel of his powers. This was before the introduction of kryptonite. Oh, by golly, that's it for our first half hour. And we'll be back in just a few minutes, right after uh, station identification, with... Uh, more old time radio and in that second half hour we're going to hear the complete original unedited broadcast of suspense and this is one uh, starring robert taylor in an adventure called house in cypress canyon but right now let's pause for station id <laughs> Thank you. 